my humble opinion, Minecraft plugins like Nexo and Items Adder have been carrying the Minecraft server community for a while now. Mind you, we're playing a game which is over 15 years old. At times, it can really feel like everything has kind of been done already. Which is why it is so refreshing to see these custom content plugins, which allow you to easily add custom items and blocks and furniture to your game. It is really cool. But these custom content plugins also have some downsides. For example, at times, this custom content can feel, well, very custom. In a perfect scenario, all of your custom content would fit in really, really well with all of the vanilla content. So that when a player who is not very familiar with Minecraft altogether would have a hard time distinguishing which content is vanilla and which content is customly added. But this is definitely not always the case. Another big downside is that a lot of these custom content plugins are paid. Which means if you want custom content on your server or if you just want to experiment with it to see if it is something for you, you will immediately have to pay for it. And I can already hear some of you guys scream in the comments, Kasai, why not just mod the game? Well, modding the game kind of defeats the whole purpose of these plugins. The whole thing which makes these plugins so special is that they allow you to add custom content to your server without requiring any modding on the user's end. So any user can join your server with a completely unmodded client and they can still experience your custom items and blocks and furniture and so on. That is what makes them so cool. And you might wonder, Kasai, why are you explaining all this? Well, because today I'm going to show you a very cool Minecraft plugin which solves most of these issues. It is called Craft Engine. It is an alternative to Nexo and Items Adder, but it takes a completely different approach to how it works. It is, by the way, made by the same developer who also made custom fishing, custom crops, and custom nameplates. Some very popular Minecraft plugins you might have heard about before. And all I can say is that this plugin is simply very, very cool. So first up, it is free. You can simply download it from websites like ModRinf without paying anything. Now, there are some limitations to this, and I will touch on this in a little bit. But the most important thing to know is that you can use Craft Engine for 100% free on any Minecraft server with less than 30 concurrent players. So if you have a Minecraft server which never succeeds 30 concurrent players, you're going to be totally fine using the free version of Craft Engine. If you have a very big public Minecraft server though, you might want to opt for the premium one, which is available on Polymart. Now there are some more additional features with the premium version of this plugin, but for most players the free version should really be fine. And the fact that it is free is not the only difference between Craft Engine and other custom content plugins. It actually fundamentally mentally works different. So trying to explain it in the most simple way possible. What Craft Engine does is it basically registers real server side blocks basically in the same way that mods do as well. So Craft Engine is basically modding your game but then only on the server side and it actually registers the custom content as a new quote unquote vanilla item or block. Now you might think to yourself that every single custom content plugin does this, but that is not true. Most custom content plugins rather have kind of a list with custom blocks. So the plugin handles all of that and it will then map those custom blocks to vanilla block states. Which is how the plugin displays those custom blocks to the players on your server. But they don't actually register the blocks on the server side. But Craft Engine does. And you can actually see this as well. So when I execute the following command in game slash ce debug get block internal id and then i choose one of the custom items that comes with the craft engine plugin don't worry i'm going to show you them in a little bit i will get a certain id craft engine node block 15 all right and if we after that use the vanilla command set block then we use that internal id so craft engine node block 15 you can see that it actually spawns this is a custom block and this is a vanilla minecraft command and we're we're able to spawn a custom block. Now that is pretty awesome. This shows that this block is actually registered on the server side and it is so cool. Now the way that Craft Engine displays these custom blocks to the client is very similar to the way that other custom content plugins do it. Though because it actually registers the blocks, it is a bit more 
customizable, you could say. For example, Craft Engine will kind of allow you to choose a vanilla block, which is kind of similar to the custom block you're trying to add, just to make it all look and feel a lot more natural and a lot more vanilla. So let me show you some of the custom blocks. I'll show you how to install and set up the plugin later in the video. I'll make sure to add timestamps so you can easily skip to that section of the video. So if you want to install the plugin yourself right now, make sure to check the timestamps. So when we type slash CE in chat, we will open the craft engine menu. You can already see a completely custom menu, of course, added with the craft engine plugin. And over here, we got some default assets, which always come with the plugin. So we got three categories, palm tree, topaz, and then miscellaneous. You can see that they added a completely custom type of wood to the game called, well, palm wood. And you can see that essentially every single wood item inside of Minecraft now has a palm wood variant. So let's make sure to get one of each of these. There we go. And let me show you what they look like. So this is a palm lock. While this is a stripped palm lock. Then we have palm wood. And of course, stripped palm wood. We got the palm plank. And these are all custom types of wood. Now, fun to show is that... If you have an axe and if you right click on the palm wood, then it will actually turn into the stripped palm wood. So that functionality is fully here, just like in vanilla Minecraft. But other blocks which you would expect a wood variant to have are also here and they look so good. So here we got the palm door. This is a door made out of palm wood. You can see it works exactly like a door. It feels exactly like a door. The hitbox is the same size as a normal door. It is just a custom door. Same thing goes for a trap door. Then we got a fence gate. Just appears like a normal fence gate. We got slabs as well. So look at that. We could just put down slabs. These are palm wood slabs. And they completely behave and feel like normal slabs. So if I would put another one here, then this would turn into kind of a full block. And when I then break it, they will both disappear. And I will have to replace it. Just as annoying as normal slabs. <laughs> the palm wood slabs do that as well. And then we got stairs. And we got a pressure plate. So this is a palm wood pressure plate. And feels like a regular Minecraft pressure plate. It animates like a regular Minecraft pressure plate, but it is again a custom item. And then there are leaves. So these are palm leaves. And we even got a palm wood sapling. Look at that. Now I'm pretty sure that currently it doesn't grow into an actual palm tree. I think that is pretty much the only thing which doesn't work now. Yeah, it just grows into an oak tree. But other than that, all of these custom items really feel and appear vanilla. Now you might think to yourself, oh, I get it, Kasai. The sapling grew into an oak sapling because in reality, Reality, this palm sapling is an oak sapling, but just like a retextured one. Well, I'm sorry to break your bubble, but this is actually a nether brick. And a lot of these items actually show themselves as nether bricks, which is quite funny. Now, you might wonder why nether brick. Nether brick is just a really good item because uh, it's kind of useless. <laughs> You cannot craft a whole lot of things in Minecraft with a nether brick. In the same way that for custom items, paper is used a lot. As paper is also a pretty useless item, which you can't do a whole lot of stuff with. Which is great for mapping it to custom items. But all of the other stuff here in Craft Engine is of equally high quality. So we got Topaz and here you have full topaz gear and they again look absolutely awesome and you might have seen already but all of these also have a completely custom tooltip which is also something which craft engine supports so here we got a custom sword and a custom pickaxe a custom hoe and a custom axe then we just have a topaz ore and of course there's also a deep slate variant and of course these are not the only items you will get the whole thing about such a custom content plugin is that you can add custom content of your own these are just things that come default with the plugin and they are a great showcase of what the plugin is capable of which is a lot so you have a shovel you got a bow which fully works then we have topaz and it has a nice cool animation going on it's like all glistering and stuff very cool and then there's topaz armor as well which is also really shiny with my shaders it actually looks great not to mention the trident and the rod and the crossbow it is just so cool and clean but there is so much more stuff and this video is going to take way too long if i'm gonna go in depth on every single item but let me just show a couple because it is so cool so the chinese lamp you've seen already but there is also a netherite anvil bam it looks like an anvil 
it feels like an anvil. The hitbox is exactly the size of an anvil, and it even works like an anvil. Then we got a gunpowder block. So this is gunpowder. And just like similar blocks in the vanilla game, gunpowder will actually fall down. Just like how sand, for example, would. Then we have a solid gunpowder block, which does, of course, not fall down anymore. We got a chessboard block, which just looks really cool. You can make such good flooring out of this. And then there is a sofa. So this sofa, you can see the hitbox. It, it, it almost looks vanilla. It looks like this could actually be in the game, but it's not. It's a custom item. And then there is a chair. And the chair is so cool. Because something you might have noticed with other custom content plugins is that even though they can all add furniture it always feels kind of stiff like you can only have furniture in certain orientations or it's always fixed to the center of a block well that's not the case with craft engine because this wooden chair i can place it wherever i want it does not have to be fixed to a block whatsoever it can literally go everywhere. So you can place it however and wherever you want. Even making it so that it is sitting on four different blocks at the same time. That is just awesome. The sofa is the one which feels the most like a generic furniture item. You can see that the hitbox is just the hitbox of a regular block. But then the model is actually bigger than that. With this is what you often see with furniture. Which is why having this or having this is so refreshing. And we have benches of course. Because that's also important. You got to have benches and we even have a table lamp which obviously you can turn on <laughs> by just right clicking on it and then there is a copper coil which looks like this and you might be like okay well that's that's kind of cool but what might be even cooler is that you can actually power it with redstone there you go when it's powered it will light up and when it's not powered well it will go off something which is also cool to mention is that the chinese lanterns actually light up and if we turn on this lamp then it will light up as well and they're not even close to showcasing every single default item there are so many more available but i hope this kind of shows what type of stuff this plugin is capable of and it is actually awesome i would also highly recommend going over the craft engine wiki page because here in the sections exclusive features and simply better it showcases certain things that this plugin can do which competitors don't really do or approach differently so for example full vanilla behavior compatibility craft engine lets you repurpose unused node blocks trip wires etc as custom block states without messing with their original server site mechanics no need to sacrifice vanilla features for custom content now this second feature actually is very powerful because here they say that craft engine allows you to use any spare vanilla block state as a custom block model so not just node blocks and tripwire and mushroom blocks, which are all blocks that get used frequently, but you can use every single one of them. Which is why things like the anvil and the fence gate looked so vanilla. Because it basically was a vanilla block, but then just kind of retextured. It also has seamless integration with data packs, but also world generation plugins like Iris and Terra. Oh, and should I mention that this plugin is open source, by the way? Maybe I should have mentioned that sooner, but this is all open source. This this is also really cool, an ultimate crafting system. So here you can see that the combination between a custom plank and a vanilla plank still gives you a chest. I know I might be geeking out a bit here, but these are the types of Minecraft plugins that just really, really excite me. And I can't wait to see what types of servers people are gonna make using a plugin like Craft Engine. Now with all of that explained, and having showcased a bunch of the default items of this plugin, let me show you how to actually install it. So to install it, all you want to do is simply click on the link in the description of this video, which will take you to the ModRinf page of Craft Engine. Now you can also purchase the premium version if you want to support the developer. Also, if you have a Minecraft server with more than 30 concurrent players, you will need to opt for the premium one. And there are some other specific features, which you can find in the wiki by looking for things that are labeled as premium exclusive, and those will be locked behind the premium version. But everything I just showed you, that is all possible with just a free version of this plugin. So simply go ahead and download this plugin. After that, drag it into the plugins folder of your Minecraft server and then give it a quick little restart. After that, what you want to do is dive into the craft engine folder, which after the restart has been generated inside of the plugins folder. And then inside of there, you want to click on config.yml. Over here, you can already see a bunch of different settings, but what we want to be looking for are the hosting settings. Now this hosting section here is about the resource pack. Of course, all of this is only possible because of Minecraft resource packs. And if you don't have the resource pack applied, you won't be able to see any of the custom content. Now, how you want to host your resource pack, that is completely up to you. If you want to use a third-party 
external host then you can just set this type to none just like this and after that you can just host it on something like google drive or mc packs and then just set that as a server resource pack inside of the server.properties file of your minecraft server and bam you're done but if you do that then every single time you want to update this plugin or add an item or a block or whatsoever you will have to replace that pack in your server.properties file and reboot your server which is just a giant hassle a way better option would be to self-host it. But if you're gonna self-host it, make sure you have a second port available on your Minecraft server. So if I go to network on my Minecraft server, you can see I have two ports available here. This is the port which is used for players to join my server, and this is a secondary port I can use for any other application. By the way, if you're still looking for a nice place to host a Minecraft server, I would highly recommend channel partner Alienhost. I've been hosting at them for a few years now, and the experience has been amazing, so do check them out through the link in the description and if you use code casasara at checkout you will get a whole 20% off of your first month which will also help me out along the way but what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply copy this second port as we're also going to go back to the server dashboard real quick because over here we want to copy the server ip and then back in the config we're going to change the server type to self we're going to replace the text local host with the ip address of our server just like that and then the port we're going to replace that with the second allocation we have available there we go that's it now simply save the content and you can reboot your server to be sure but what we can also do is simply type slash ce reload all in game which will then reload everything reapply the resource pack and there we go we got all of our custom items here. And if you've watched this full video, you now know what Craft Engine is capable of and how to install it. I'm not done with Craft Engine though. I will soon be making a video on how to actually add custom content using the Craft Engine plugin. So if you don't want to miss that video, do make sure to subscribe. That way you will be notified as soon as that video goes up. And with that being said, that's gonna be it for today. Do make sure to subscribe to my channel, join my Discord. Thank you so much, channel members. And then I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.